Drink responsibly to avoid AA meetings. No go to ultra like bunga test or no mag bunga puzzle. He in Ghana is not pants come nyaga enga eighteen and obvious. Bunga shayeli upuzil. Is that so good to give you a look? We know when I'm charging because I'm spending again. Um kaka, one more wine is my favorite. You must have um zanti. You wanna get ohamba pambi lingo kick us again. I'm a wine. I said to pinne el peso. Give pete is coco slam. Give pete has to lam. Who Alex? In this, I found the in marketing. Yeah, that's how I get in holiday. Kona la pala guma wine lens. Yeah, shy wine testing. Yeah, mo na watu kuti wana ge umka kefu nuge na guo. Joba ge ila pana ge Emmitus Edge Winery. Joba ge ifuna is cool. Joba ge ila na ship. Jenga yoge e winery manager. Joba ge sales and marketing for your na len company. Kuto mi nubuzo mi zbuza ono kuti. Ngabe in this, I shall go be. Maybe on the fourth street. No kuto una bom zala ba ingaki. Maybe four cousins. It insists on it. So you put it like young girl on booze. You better get strong and go. But before you leave, my friend, you choose it. I see why in one song it paralyzes. I pause them seven days. It was just me and my mom and my brothers in the house, and the fire was on top of us. I just thought that I, I might not be able to open enough doors. Hey guys, I'm Alex Schoen. This is my home on Summerhill Wines. Wine, working with great people in such a beautiful place. Who wouldn't want a learnership in paradise? This is my story. Follow me. I pretty much only grew up on a nature reserve. Two, mainly, two, I can think of two. One in Hlobo when I was just very, very young. Um, I'd say up until I was about maybe four or five years old, I lived in a, re lived in a reserve that my, my father worked on. In 2000, and I think at nine it was, um, these kids smoking left their, left their, what they were smoking, lit by accident and started a massive wildfire in the Yonkers Reserve that we were uh, living in. Uh, we actually then started, started having to evacuate the people out of the valley and um, evacuate the houses and we actually abandoned all um, form of command and control and just went and protected structures. It was just me and my mom and my brothers in the house and the fire was on top of us. So first thing I packed up was my PlayStation. <laughs> what would be especially scary is that my dad didn't only have to focus on the fires that happened within Yonkersok, but he managed quite a large area uh, going into Franchuk, for example. Any wildfire that happened in the region, uh, my dad would have to rush off to, and you know, he would climb into the helicopters that would do the bombing. He did a lot of, he wasn't in the field, but very often he could be. And I don't know, to me, you know, watching your dad go off to a fire, climbing into helicopters that almost, you know, you, you, you look at a wildfire, a big wildfire happening, and there's a helicopter crash or two uh, in each fire. So it was very scary growing up, you know, watching your dad go off to a fire. And to me, you know, you would pray that you'd come back safe, unscathed, and alive a lot of the time. So that for me was was something that I had to get used to and was very worrying. I was so proud though. I used to go brag to my friends at school all the time. You know, my dad was fighting that fire and whatnot. When I was very, very young, so I would say like grades one to seven, I'd say I was very adamant that I was gonna be a pilot one day. Uh, I loved helicopters especially, and I'd say it's mainly because my dad, for example, when he used to, my dad being a nature conservationist, and then I was lucky enough, you know, my dad knows a lot of people being in his, in his field, so he managed to, managed to get me in contact with a, 
with a guy who could show me around the Air Force bases in the area. So I went to Langebaan, went to the Air Force there, looked around and saw if that's what I really wanted to do. And I just realized, you know, our government doesn't really pump that much money into, into, the, into, the, the, into the military. So it, uh, it made it very, very difficult because I just thought that I, I might not be able to open enough doors if I go to the Air Force. It might not be what I wanted to do. So I started second guessing myself. office job not for me and that was one of the reasons why I decided to, to start a family in the, in, 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 on a nature reserve simply so that my children could experience that, that I say freedom, um, experience nature like, like I experienced nature as a child and um, but at the end of the day it's not about forcing um, uh, somebody, your child into a into a career. They need to learn to make their own decisions and, and follow their own paths. So then after I realized that wasn't what I was really going to go going into, I decided that perhaps I should just take a gap year and um, figure out what I want to do. So a gap year was the plan after school and I decided I had nothing to do in the holidays. I, I was just you know, wasting time. So I really, I decided to, there was an opening, Lola at Mitre's Edge. Basically, I can remember it quite well. I can remember the situation we were in. I was in fact with Lola's son, her daughter, and then uh, two of our friends. And what she had been doing is she had had a, uh, she had had a, one of, she had had her niece. Um, she hired her niece to help conduct tastings uh, because what, with how small the wine farm Mitre's Edge is, they pretty much just, uh, they pretty much, it's very small, it's family run, it was Lola, she would do the wine making and she would do the tastings and she just needed someone to help out with the tastings and her niece was getting tired of doing the tasting, she was, well not tired, she was just ready to move on so she stopped working which opened a gap. Lola was very hesitant to get someone new because her niece she could trust, you know, it's, it's family. Uh, she wanted to hire someone to do the tastings, they'd obviously have to handle sales and whatnot as well. I said, I just said out loud to Luke, uh, Luke her son, you know, why don't I just start working for your mom just for a bit, just for two months. Um, up until December, it gives her time to look for someone she can trust and I started working there and then, yeah, she pretty much decided me there and then, decided there and then, you know, she'd take me under her wing. Um, approached me about, yeah, approached me about being, me apprenticing her, I guess, helping me to learn about wine making so I could one day um, make wine myself, I guess. Lola, she called me for an interview um, to see if I have the skills, the ability to um, uh, to be a winemaker. Even if I don't have the skills, I feel like she can mentor me in a, in a way where she can give me the right skills, give me the right tools and resources to, um, and knowledge especially to potentially be a winemaker one day. My advice to him would uh, to be who he is. Um, he's, he's got a lot of knowledge, he's got a lot of experience um, for a young man. And um, that is, I think, enough in its own to, to get him where he wants to go. If he's got the ambition and the drive, he'll get there. Um, my advice is just be yourself. If I, if I get the position, wow, it, w it would mean the world to me, especially at Mitre's Edge specifically. Um, not only would getting in that position to be able to learn from anyone regardless just any winemaker but the fact that it's Lola you know Lola being one of the first female winemakers in South Africa her experience and knowledge learning from her would be absolutely incredible
to handle my incorrect or my yeah my incorrection I managed to managed to correct and managed it well I, I, I think um, Okay guys, I've just arrived at Mitre's Edge. I'm about to go in for my interview. I'm very nervous, but I'm ready. Let's go. Morning, Alex. Welcome to Mitre's Edge. Thank you. We're a small family-run business. Um, we took over from my father-in-law in 1999. And we have 18 hectares of grapes, um, specializing in um, the Bordeaux varietals, as well as Shiraz, and some Chenin Blanc and Viennia. So Alex, yeah, what, what do you think would make a good one, and um, how would you go about that? Um, so for me, the greatest thing, uh, or the most important thing you've got to put into your work is really passion. Uh, for me, that's got to, it's one of the most important things. Like I said, I'm quite a passionate person, and if you really don't have a love and a passion for what you're doing, it's the outcome's really, for me, not going to be what it could be. And uh, definitely a lot of creativity, you know, it's more than just a science in my eyes. Uh, there's an art to it for sure, uh, I see. Um, so I'd say definitely for me mainly it'd be creativity, passion, um, but then of course knowledge definitely does help quite a lot. Um, and I think that, that together could make an exceptional wine and winemaker. So Alex, um, what, what do you think makes a good wine? Well, one thing, if there's anything that I've been taught so far within wine, um, is that wine is first of all extremely personal. So what makes a good wine is first of all your own palate, whether or not you like the wine, what I think of a wine is going to be completely different to what someone else might think of a wine. Um, I guess things are like that in general, but more importantly, you know, wine is very, very personal. But if I were to taste a wine, what I would look out for is, I would say mainly balance. I don't like certain characteristics overpowering others. I want to get a taste of everything. So make sure that, you know, it's a very well balanced wine, I guess. Okay, great, great, Alex. And so um, where do you, self, you see yourself um, slotting in? Um, in the very distant future, I, I would like to see myself perhaps making wine one day. Um, as for getting to that uh, position, I guess I'd really like to learn from Lola, um, the winemaker. Um, I, I would like to assist her where I can. And with yeah, my love for nature, with my background in nature, I really think being involved in the vineyards is really something that would help quite a lot and I would really like to be involved in the vineyards, I love plants. Were there any situations where um, the, uh, consumers were probably coming in and giving you a difficult time? How did you handle those situations? <laughs> um, I actually did have a difficult time, not m too big of a deal. Uh, basically. Basically, I just had a bit of a misunderstanding with the customer where I thought that they were allowed to eat the restaurant's food in the tasting area, which they weren't, and it came as a bit of a, um, it was on my behalf, I told them they were allowed to when they weren't, and that made a bit of an issue, and um, it was taken out of me, I, I, was in a, I was in a little bit of shock and embarrassed that I'd, you know, disappointed, uh, but like I said, I was open to failing. Um, I was ready to fail. You know, if you don't, you're never going to learn if you don't fail. So it, was a learning so it was a learning experience for me. You know, not that it was a very big deal, but um, you know, I, I learned how to how to handle my incorrect or my yeah my incorrection. I managed to managed to correct and managed it well. I, I, I think. Um, and yeah, it it. it gave me more confidence almost, you know, knowing how to do it properly the next time, and knowing how to conduct yourself the next time, gives you more confidence knowing how to handle it. And that I think is quite a decent lesson, I guess, in Absolutely. knowing how to fail. Okay, Alex, thanks, thanks very much for that. Um, um, we're, we're gonna basically be putting three tasks out for you uh, today to, to see how you'll handle them. And um, depending on how you get through them, um, will um, basically uh, be one of the factors in deciding if we'll take you on for an attorney. And, and so we wish you all the best in that and uh, look forward to seeing you after that. Thank you very much. <laughs>
o na le pone go kelelong ya hao le dintho tse o di labalabelang go pelong ya hao dintho tse o di tla aha bophilo ba hao wa ba sona seo Alex yena ka tsantsello le maikemisetso a hae ho setse na konyana fela di wine maker ke batho ba shebeletsa maiso ya wine ka o fela ho sila merara ho ibidisa ho kenya mabotlolong le ho isa di take so karolong ena ilo ba sela assistant batho ba thusang ka ho tlo net fa sa di equipments di lokile ho ka sebetsa ka takatso ya hae di chemicals le agriculture a ka shaba le kala Culturist Bona He, Bashaville Management Jedi Veniazi, the production Yamirara, Mahaslasi, Haho Elevator Eka Huisandi Toronza Ha, Otame Honka di Steps, Mohato Kamohato, Ota Finiel. Hi, my name is Bertus de Clerc. Uh, I'm a farmer. I've been farming for 26 years. Uh, we're on a farm, might as it's um, vineyard, and today I'm the mentor for. Alex. Hi, I'm Lola Nichols. Um, together with my husband, we own and manage Mitre's Edge Vineyards. Um, I'm the winemaker, and today I'll be Alex's mentor. Um, uh, yeah, this is in Malbec, eh? Isn't it? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> isn't this one? What is this now? Yeah, this is in Mola. Mola, okay. Alex truly poured his heart out and didn't bottle anything up before you. Like a corkscrew. <coughs> That made me cough. Anyway, to what you want, but it's in Lungele in Israel, what I mean, Sasha, which you need to be the right age. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyway, I'm hearing something through the grapevine. But you are, it's time for the word jumble. Give me a guess again, I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna be in Ogu, I know she. Oh, my husband, get on a paragraph, and I will Facebook. Oh, my God, I'm gonna be in the middle. Can you imagine something when I get Alex Ashai Taska? Keep your color. Now, come on, hashtag girls with vineyards. See, let's put it hashtag boy in a vineyard. Bonang. All right, Alex. Uh... Welcome to task one. Um, I want you to do a bit of suckering. There's a lot of side shoots uh, that we need to get out. And then uh, we're gonna break a lot bit of leaves uh, so that we can get more sunlight onto the grapes. Right, let's go ahead and Alex, I think uh, you can start with task one. All right. Uh, so what I think I'm going to start with is just do a bit of tipping. So taking the tips of the vines off, uh, mainly the longer ones. Um, the short ones still need some growth. Uh, here's a long one over here. Tip still on. Um, the others in this part. Uh, to be to be dead honest, I never never once pictured myself uh, to be a, a white maker when I was a kid. Um, to me, it didn't. I didn't quite understand what winemaking and having a wine farm entailed. But the more I discovered about it, and the more I learned about it, the more it interests me, and the more it sparks passion. You know, it's very much involved with nature, very deeply involved with nature, very deeply involved with you know art and science as well. And for me, uh, I really do. Where I didn't once see myself, I definitely see myself now. Uh, being in a position at a farm like this would be fantastic and uh, I think it would suit me quite well. Uh, Alex, um, what, is, what is the importance of um, doing a side shoot? So taking out the leaves, what I'm looking for is to give the grapes as much sunlight as I can um, because sunlight is obviously very important for their growth. Uh, so just trying to prevent as much density as I can by removing some of the very big leaves, covering some sunlight from the grapes, and then also some of the side sprouts to, I guess, prevent even more dense growth for the leaves to just give the grapes as much possible sunlight as possible. And then uh, for the tipping of the vines, these very long ones, they've obviously grown just a bit too long. The shorter ones can still grow, so there's, it's a bit useless doing tipping with those, uh, but with the long ones, 
Um, I just like to prevent them from growing too much and just creating too much density is very important that the, that the grapes get enough sunlight um, and we want to try and make that as best as we can with these grapes. So I'm going to continue going, looking for these side sprouts and, and dense, dense leaves. Challenges in a vineyard, uh, um, you know, nowadays with our weather, it's uh, even in other, other countries, it's, uh, you get a lot of rain, you get storms, you get floods, you get um, drought. Um, so that's, that's, that's quite a, a challenge, uh, especially with drought. Um, sometimes you've got, you, you, you've got to go and, and you cut off grapes. Uh, just for your vine to survive, and it happened on on my disease once. Um, but you got to save the, the vine. So nature, uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 a challenge. It's it's, um, but you got to keep your eye on it. I'm pretty sure we're working on the Malbec grape uh, on the farm. It's a very um, very fussy grape from what I've heard uh, to work with. One year can be exception, growing exceptionally well, the next year not too well. So this is a grape in a vineyard, vineyard I guess you'd want to take special care with. Um, uh, yeah, this is in Malbec. No? Isn't it? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> is it this one? What is this now? It is, this is a Merlot. Merlot, okay. You get different species of grapes uh, called vari oh, varietals. And it's when the wine is already made, when it's in its drinking form, it's relatively easy to tell the difference from the taste. Different grapes will give off uh, different kinds of flavors and different levels of flavors as well. Uh, but in the vineyard, they also look quite different. Certain grapes will be uh, smaller than others. The one grape that Baptist mentioned was Petit Verdot. Petit, to translate it to English, literally means small. So you can expect a very rich grape in the cellar. You can't make a very good wine or with bad grapes. And the winemaker is putting the, the cap on the bottle, is, is finishing the product. It, it's, it's hard work to be, I think, to be a winemaker. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of uh, detail they, they need to do. Uh, but I think we we find one now. Well, it's uh, quite young for these vineyards right now. With the time of the year, you can see they're still very young, very small. So a lot of the focus is actually going to rather be on uh, for this time of the year. A lot of it is going to be helped by the uh, the leaves catching the sunlight. So for now, uh, this kind of density of leaves will suffice uh, for now, I guess. Um, done a fair share of tipping. The vines are, as I said, really quite young. Um, so they're going to get even longer. Might need very soon to come back for maybe a bit more clearing and a bit more tipping for these vines. But as for now, I think they're looking quite good. Le rato la Alex se la ipona ha tsa ha sebetsa mane ko di vineyards and hape a sebetsa le ka hlago go ikwetlisetsa go ba viticulturist mass leaf physical science di compulsory subject ya life science e tla go thusa ka dikwetliso BSc ya agriculture viticulture kapa yona diploma ya viticulture ha o le a winemaker o tlamega go bana le bokgone ba go ngkha le go taster o bana le tsebo ya microbiology le yona chemistry ma haslase ha o sa bope morero ka bophelo ba hao o tla wela go ba motho o mong Okay, Alex, um, welcome to your second task. What we're going to be doing today is making our new 2017 Sholto samples. Um, we've got two blends that we're not too sure on. We're going to make up both in small quantities to make sure which one we like best. And then after that, I would like you to start racking the wine into tank. Okay, let's start in the cellar. Um, let's go ahead. OK, 
Okay, Alex, so we're going to make up a blend. One of the blends that I've decided is um, to do a predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon based right. blend. So we'll take, um, I think you can take 250 mils from this barrel. Okay. Right, so I'm going to be drawing and measuring 250 milliliters of our Cabernet Sauvignon as part of the blend, making it a Cab Sav driven blend. Might take some time. To my understanding, uh, to um, to rack the wine is going to be perhaps moving it from a barrel to cont a container, or vice versa. Uh, that's a tough process. Um, you have to make sure you you're watching the wine because if you don't watch the wine, you're it it goes into the barrel through a pump at a very rapid rate. If you're not watching carefully, you can mess a lot of wine. Uh, and messing wine is not something you want to do, especially when you're producing at such low levels of production. Very excited to get involved into, into the cellar, um, to see the blending, to see the racking. I've been told I'm going to get very dirty, so I'm excited to get my hands dirty. So the last bit of the blend, the Petit Verdot, is being added to what would hopefully be the new Sholto. Uh, this last bit is just to use to actually mix, mix the wine to blend it for the full process. Obviously, the last <laughs> first part of the of the blending tasting. It's got a lovely nose. It really is. That's a winner. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's really good. That's good. Very dry. The challenges in winemaking, um, obviously, in our cellar was um, we converted a shed into a cellar, so we initially didn't have all the um, the equipment that we would have had. Um, we the challenges are: it's the floors get slippery. It's it, it can be a dangerous place to work in. I've had a number of falls, but um, um, you know you just get up and carry on. It's 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 you must just be careful. Okay, Alex. So we're going to rack out that one barrel into the smaller tank and use the balance of the wine just to top up the rest of the barrels. Oh. Okay. So if you'd like to go there, I will stand here. Sure. And you, yeah, I'll make sure I'll shout when it's full. All right. So, uh, oh, have you got that? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I'll... All right. Okay, you ready? Again, okay, now push it down to the bottom. I think there's a lot of science in winemaking, there's a lot of, of um, art in winemaking. Um, ultimately, um, wines are made in the vineyard and uh, perfected in the cellar. Um, so a, a winemaker must um, be passionate about what they want to do and obviously the science is important, um, but the, 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 the art is also um, very important. I did learn how physical wine is, didn't quite you know, think that uh, one would think that winemaking can be a bit more glamorous, but uh, as I said, it's a lot more hands-on and dirty than one, one would expect, and I thoroughly enjoy that. I don't want to sit and do the same thing every day. I want things to be different, um, I, I want to be, I want to move, uh, be active, and I think the cellar, because of that, um, the cellar was a very 
awesome place to be and I, I feel like I, I did quite well in that area. Um, my background in science really shows itself in that, in that form, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's full now. Okay, Alex, thanks very much. I think you've done a great job. Um, yeah, you've racked the wine. We can just take the rest to that room there. All right, thank you. Mona ra bona gore process ha e thelle fela jwalo reking ko go tlosa wine ka re ha barrele ho isa ko blending tank e le yona karolo ya o qetela ya ho etsa wine se khotsofatsang ka mosebetsi ona ke go bopa ntho mo e kalang o i bonele mo e fellang teng and hape o i bone e rekiswa ko mabenkeleng tshe ka mosebetsi ka o fela ho na le diphepetso ho tshwana le formula ya wine ho etsa hala hore ska sebetsa ka papeshi e senye he ka o fela ma haslas ha re suteng o ska wa sebedisa mabaka a ha go validate ho senke ha to ha ha o ene ha petlwela go dumela ditumelo tse leng gore o tseba handle gore da o thibela Okay, my husband, in this area, I got to tell you, man, I'm going to crash you, I'm going to touch you, I'm going to touch you, I'm going to touch you, but you want to touch you, I'm going 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 to touch Ginnige zeke uthi faka impendulo yakho ngikhulushesha khona lapha lokuthi twisana ku Facebook uma ke sibuya emva kokhefu insizo ke iyabheka ukuthi omuphu wine ohamsana no cheese or cheese I hope I didn't sound cheesy <laughs> Okay that was a dry joke like dry wine Kona manje let's take a break and let it ferment but first I'll see you after the break Hey sadza ma grapes uzoqedele So we're going to do task three now. Um, what I'd like you to do today is uh, conduct a wine tasting and I want you to pair each of the wines with the cheese and explain to our guests why we've chosen the cheese with each specific wine and just um, explain each wine what the components are. All right guys, well welcome to Mitre's Edge. Um, what I'm going to uh, do with you guys is start you off with this wine right here called the NV Me. But to give you an idea of what wines are produced on the farm, uh, our winemaker Lola solely focus or focuses more on her Bordeaux style wines, <clears throat> but does dabble a bit in some her own grapes such as Viognier. Uh, Shiraz is also a grape that comes from that region. Uh, we're gonna pair each cheese with a different wine and uh, we're gonna start on your left hand side with the cheese um, and I'm gonna pour you your first wine right now to pair with that. So to give you an idea of what wine you're tasting, this is called Envy Me. The name Envy Me is a little bit of a play on words, being slightly envious of me with a bit more wine than you guys. Uh, but it does also stand for non-vintage Mitre's Edge. Um, non-vintage, just for those who might not know, uh, it just specifies the harvest year of the grapes. Um, non-vintage means that the grapes were in fact harvested from different uh, years. I would say a challenge for me is definitely confidence. You want to make sure that you're a very confident speaker, that people believe you when you really say something in a tasting. Um, I want to make sure people, you know, you've got to make sure people take you seriously. So you've got to almost, <clears throat> you have to portray a very confident person. Even if you're not very confident, you, you kind of have to put it on. Um, and I, I think that's very important. I, I do worry about getting asked the odd question I don't know the answer to, uh, but like I said, it's not often a very big worry. Alright guys, so the first two wines gave you a very good idea of the entry level and mid-range, and the mid-range of our wines, of Mitre's Edge's wines. The next three are going to give you a taste of the flagships, the more premium, higher quality wines. And the first one we're going to uh, step into is the Merlot. Um, so if you could please get your glass to this side of the table.
All right, guys, the cheese that that molar was paired with was a camembert cheese. Uh, really lovely cheese. The farm that it comes from produces very creamy uh, cheese products. Uh, it makes for quite a wonderful um, pairing with that molar. What it does very well is it coats your mouth. Uh, helps to influence the wine a bit better. Uh, the whole goal of pairing the cheese with the wine is to obviously complement the wine. I think it does so excellently. I think the speciality, uh, what makes our wine special is there's a lot of love and passion that's gone into it. And, and I mean that from the vineyard side. It's, it's farmed um, very scientifically and it's farmed properly. And um, everything we do, we do by hand, from hand picking to hand sorting. Um, we crush and de-stalk, we do punch downs with sticks every four to six hours. We have a hand press, so it's, it's really a hands-on um, experience or, or job, yeah. Quite a couple of uh, the Mitre's Edge wines have uh, won a few accolades at the Michelangelo competition. It was a really exceptional competition, one of the biggest in Africa. And Lola sent three of her wines coming back with exceptional awards. The Molo that you tasted, winning a silver, a double gold winner for this Cab Sav, and then uh, the best of the bunch, the Cab Franc, came back with a trophy, which is an absolutely exceptional uh, achievement of Lola to, achieve, to get. So, some really high quality premium wines, moving on to the more flagship section of it to taste. All right, so the next one that I'm going to pour for you uh, is really quite a big wine for the farm. It means a lot to the farm. It means a lot to the winemaker especially. Uh, but to give you a bit of a context about what style of wine this is. So this is what one would call a Bordeaux blend. Uh, to cover the basis of what a Bordeaux blend is, it is a blend of different grapes. Uh, and the grapes themselves have to originate from the region of Bordeaux, France. Typically tastings, if you look at most farms, they're usually about five to six bottles per tasting uh, that you pour for your guests, five different wines. So I would imagine uh, Lola's gonna set up five. Whenever you're involved in red wine, make sure the last thing you wear is something white uh, because it, it does get messy even when you don't realize it. You will get a drop of red wine on a white shirt. Uh, I've done it too many times. <laughs> Do not want to ruin any more white shirts. So. Um, So if you guys have absolutely any interest when it comes to the wine, or if you would like uh, to ask me any questions at all, please feel free to ask me any I have an open book with the wine. Um, how long each of them are matured for? Alright, cheap is. So, so it's about 18 months, yeah. it's um, in barrel. Okay, French oak. French oak and a mixture of uh, uh, first Yeah. Getting, getting asked a question that I perhaps don't know isn't necessarily uh, something I, I worry a lot about, um, but you know, it can be a, a tad bit embarrassing, perhaps on the farm's behalf, you know, not knowing what you're talking about. Uh, but I think given the, given the, the context, um, I, I think it's fair to say that a, a tough question isn't necessarily a bad thing. Any other questions? What is the annual production? Uh, so with the main focus at Mitre's Edge being uh, on premium quality wines, you would want to keep the quantity as low as possible. So annually there's about 30,000 bottles uh, produced a year, roughly 30 tons worth of grapes go into the cellar. Um, so that keeps to very low, but as, fo uh, as much focus on quality as possible, but as, uh, and with very low production. Um, if we hire someone, I'm looking for someone with very definitely with a lot of passion. Um, they must love what they're doing. It mustn't be uh, another tough day at the office. It must be, they must want to come to work. They must be happy to be at work. Um, and, um, you know, they must be prepared to get their hands dirty. Thank you, Alex. Um, this is the end then of your task three. Um, thanks.
Welcome back, Alex. Yeah, and tell me about your day and how, how it went and, and what you learned. I think it went really well. It was everything I imagined and more. I had to get a little bit of a clean before uh, coming out of the cellar. Um, I enjoyed the hands-on in the in the vineyards. Uh, I especially like enjoyed getting dirty and learning uh, in the cellar, um, and then realizing how I can use my strengths in areas like the tasting, uh, using my my charisma and uh, uh, background in sales, I guess. Um, I definitely see myself in that area, so I enjoy it a lot and I really do see this as my future perhaps one day. So what, what you've been through today, you, you, is this all kind of uh, work or training that you'd like to do? I definitely think this is something I want to do. I love, like I said, getting dirty, I love being involved in nature, um, specifically plants especially, so I definitely have an interest, I have a thirst to want to learn more about it and I think in this sort of a place, there will always be a need and a way to learn more as well. So I definitely do see myself wanting to do this more and more. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. It was tough, uh, but as I always say, you know, I want to be out of my comfort zone. It was uh, everything I wanted in the mansion, so I really do see myself again. So, uh, if you didn't get the position, uh, what, what have you got out of the saying? What, what, what would you take forward with you? Well, most importantly, I would say I got experience. I, I got to experience things that many other people wouldn't have been given the chance to. Um, in the vineyards, in the cellar, in the tasting area, uh, I definitely learnt and I grew definitely as well um, in, in this time. And I see myself perhaps uh, using it, even if I didn't get the position, perhaps looking for a position somewhere else but like, like I said doing this is definitely a passion of mine and something I really would like to see myself doing in the future um, so I learned I'll use what I learned from here I'll use the experience I gained from here and if I unfortunately don't get the position I'll try and use it somewhere else um, but I, I definitely won't stop like I said I'm a pretty stubborn person so I've had um, some feedback from your mentors today and um yeah, so are there any other questions that you'd like to ask um, me about? Well, I already I love the way the farm is run. Uh, I love the people at the farm. Um, so welcoming, so generous. Um, but just I would want to know where perhaps you saw the farm in five to ten years. You know, I, I would want, it would be nice to see a plan in action and I would definitely love to be a part of that plan. Um, so long as it's in the right direction for me, I guess. So, where would you perhaps see both me in, in, involved in the farm, or where you see the farm in the next few years? Yeah, we, we our focus then is attention to detail and, and, and high quality wines, so premium wines. And currently, we are on a trajectory to double our production within five years. We still want to keep ourselves in the boutique wine space, so we still we want to keep ourselves at the premium level of wine and um, so that, that is a serious goal of ours um, is, is to increase uh, our production and so yeah great it's um, great Alex we, we I had some really good feedback from from Burgess and, and Lola they they were really happy with the tasks that they set you um, might mean some very minor things but on the whole um, uh, very very positive feedback so um, yeah we'd, we'd like to welcome you on board uh, to uh, enjoy uh, learning here and, and uh, to do your internship here. So, Thank uh, you very much. I wish you all the best for that. What's up guys? So it looks like I really did get the position which is absolutely fantastic. It means the absolute world to me. I hope to one day make wine at a premium high quality just like Lola does and to all my hustlers out there, Pressa, Pusha, Panda. Well done, Alex. Riboni ka wena gore ditholwana ha ditle ka mohlolo ke ka se o sietsang, se o sekentseng, se tla supa ndi tla morago tsa hao. Botso ya rona ya beke ena e tswako a ndile. A rena o batla o tseba ka dikhariya se teng go sarse ka ntle go accounting le auditing. Sarse le yona e tshwana le dikhampani ka o fela ena le department tse fapaneng. O ka ba admin, o ka ba clerk, o ka ba tax assessor, batho ba ileng gore ba tsheka gore khampani ka pamotho o tax wa jwang. O ka ba tax collector, o ka sebetsa ko legal department ko 
IT department ho ya ho wena ka dikwetliso o ka etsa Bcom ka pawetsa yena BA ka ba ha ba tla o sebetsa ka dintho tsa taxi o ka ithutela taxation ha e ka ba hona le ho sa utlwang ho pula o chakela Facebook ka ba yona website ya rona ke emetse ya ha o potso Ades se go mesene ke ama one class wetho sibongeleke umfana u Alex ngokusitholela ngi internship entsha phinde futhi ke sibonga abantu abalapha ke Emitas Edge winery ngokumnikeza leli thuba ngithi nsezwa kuwena ukhulile you have grown up you are matured like fine wine cheers speaking of which still sikhaza ukuthi ngikeze impendulo khona lapha na kuwe jumbo Ikama I got a cell phone number 30 vintage. You better move to the next week. Come on, come on. 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 Come